What's going on, y'all? Here to talk about the buffs and changes I've made to both, not only Salazzle, but also Salandit. Uh, I've got some really cool things to get into here with the abilities and the interactions between the abilities and all the new moves in the game. But before I can get into explaining my thought process behind all the stuff you see on the screen, I need to have a disclaimer for new viewers. Uh, appreciate y'all clicking on the video. If you're returning, by the way, you know, you can always skip ahead like a minute if you don't want to deal with the intro stuff. But if you are returning, uh, sorry, if you are new, uh, pause the video, read the description. I've got a really detailed bullet point list going over all of the basics of the ROM hack, the thought, uh, my, my general thought process and approach with it. I also have videos covering all of that information as well that you can check out when you're done with this one. And I also have videos for every other Pokemon in the game. Uh, most importantly, when you're done with this video, don't click off now because I'll mess up that watch time. But uh, when you're done with the video, you can check out the move guide right here. Uh, go through all of these. I put them all in categories for your viewing convenience. It's super important to check these out. So if you haven't already, make sure you do that uh, because the moves heavily impact the way the Pokemon function now. Uh, but yeah, with all that out of the way, uh, last thing also, by the way, make sure you drop a like, comment, sub. I know it's annoying when I ask for that, but it's definitely very uh, helpful. So, yeah. All right. So land is a lazzle. So... Uh, so landed as prankster while Salazzle, I was actually really, really struggling to come up with a third ability. So if you, if those of you are returning, you know, viewers from Sweltering Sun, you might be remembering that Salazzle had dry skin in Sweltering Sun. Uh, that was fucking stupid. I hate that. I don't know why I did that. I was thinking about the logic of it. It makes no fucking sense. My logic was, oh, they're a salamander technically, even though they're more of a lizard, not really a salamander at all. Um, like they're not actually a salamander it's just a name it's like how charmander is called charmander or char you know mander but it's not actually a fucking uh salamander but anyway they're more like lizards not salamanders and uh they have no affiliation with water the pokedex like explicitly says they like dry like hot environments they don't like ret they don't like rain they don't like water they have no reason to uh, you know to be taking damage in the sun and, and healing in the rain that makes no sense um even on Heliolisk, it makes no sense, but that's a different rant for another day. Um, although, actually, you can probably watch the, the video on Heliolisk for Sweltering Sun if you're curious as to my take there. Um, I mean, it's not even a take, man. It's just the fucking truth. That's what the ability means. Fucking Game Freak just doesn't know. Anyway, rant over. No dry skin. Okay, that's my point. No dry skin for them. So, Flash Fire is another great immunity ability. Obviously, it's not as good as, like, dry skin is in terms of defensive immunity. But, number one, they're frail. Um, so having a immunity to fire is still good, especially like late game, you know, uh, there's like fucking 250 power guaranteed crit, guaranteed burn, detonate flying around, you know, once in a while. So being immune to that is awesome. You know, who the fuck cares if you're resistant, you're still taking a million damage from that. So being able to absorb any fire move and get a free fire type boost is really, really useful for sure. So flash fire is always a good ability with, um... Move Relearner and with infinite ability changing capabilities, you can always switch around your sets um, and your abilities. So it's nice to be able to take advantage of Flash Fire once in a while. Uh, it really rewards prep, right? If there's a fire move you need to switch it on for that boss fight. Uh, Merciless is sick on both of them. Merciless is, is just a beautiful ability. Uh, so Corrosion is gone. You might notice Corrosion is pretty ass. Um, I was trying hard to justify it because like, okay, there is tit uh, Titan Orthworm, Titan Great Tusk, sorry, uh, Iron Treads, Orthworm, fucking uh the loyal three titan fights you know that's five titan fights that you could toxic that you wouldn't otherwise be able to but i don't know it's still pretty situational still pretty underwhelming um so i ended up uh scrapping it uh and salazzle i was really struggling to figure out a third ability because i didn't want to give them hubris like in sweltering sun on the totem form uh i'm sorry i guess getting to this text Sorry, y'all. Okay, we're good. Um, so, yeah, no hubris, because uh, I don't like how hubris overshadows Merciless, uh, because Scarf hubris, you know, is pretty brainless. But so is Scarf Merciless, for the record. It's pretty easy to get a teeth spike up. You don't even have to do it yourself. You can get a teeth spike up with an ally, but especially, even just with yourself, you can do, like, teeth spike Sash, Merciless. I don't know. There's so many fucking easy ways to get it going. Um, but once you get the teeth spike up, it's GG, right? Like, you, you crit everything. You have... Oh, my God. Nobody told me I forgot Venishock. How the fuck do people don't catch mistakes from me ever, man? I'm sure somebody might not leave it in the comments. Four minutes in, I realize there's no fucking Venishock on here, man. Um, throw it on at level 38. Honestly, it's pretty generous. It should probably be a bit later, but I'll let him. I'll let him cook, man. So Venishock is 70 power right now, but I might have to nerf that back down to. I mean, not nerf it, but just re rebalance it back to 65 because. It, <laughs> T-Spike is so easy to get off first to AI, man. It's not, like, competitive, right? There's no hazard control. You just get the T-Spike and it stays the whole match. So you're basically getting a free 140 power move on the entire team as long as they're not, you know, going to absorb the T-Spikes or be immune to them. 
Uh, hold on, let me just store this on there. Salandit, Salazzle. So something I haven't mentioned yet is that Salandit is an option over Salazzle. So Salandit, as you can read, uh, has tons of really cool prankster options, while Salazzle has that multi-scale. So yeah, I was really struggling to find a final ability. I was, I was stuck between multi-scale or elegance, but I really don't like priority cheese. If you're a returning viewer, you'll know the deal for why I don't like abilities that make you immune to priority. I don't like giving those out too much. Um, I like being really selective with them. Because um, otherwise it just kind of nullifies me ever putting that on the AI in the first place, right? So... Uh, no, no elegance. So I opted for multi-scale because it's a cool. I, I, I love poison types. I love bulky poison types. So, you know, give them a bit of defensive utility there. Um, pretty neat. Uh, a lot of defensive utility, really, because black sludge plus uh, multi-scale is really good. Um, and you have morning sun for healing, and also just multi-scale letting you switch in on hits you would not otherwise be able to switch in on is really good. So Lazzle also has uh, fire lash. Well, both of them have fire lash, which is a cheesy flinch move. That's um. So you might notice Lazzle is a bit of a mix attacker. Um. You know, it's not like the best mix attack around the world, but it does have some good physical options. I also give it physical stab moves earlier. So, for example, it gets access to Flare Blitz at level 40, which is really strong. Really, really, really strong. Uh, Flare Blitz will heavily out damage like Flamethrower at that point in the game, for example. Um, and Inferno and Fire Blast require Wide Lens. So, yeah, uh, Wildfire is stronger than Flare Blitz because of your higher special attack, but Wildfire can't be used with Choice Scarf, while Flare Blitz can. So, like, Merciless Flare Blitz is really good, while Wildfire, Wildfire with Scarf requires you to switch out, because Wildfire can't be used twice in a row. Same with Temper Flare. Um, you have to switch out. Overheat is Special Flare Blitz now. Blast Burn is what Overheat used to be. So, Blast Burn is fucking nuts with Merciless, as you can tell, right? Think about it, right? You're always going to be critting. So, you're dropping your Special Attack, but because of Merciless, you're critting through. So, if you run Scarf Blast Burn with T-Spikes up and Scarf Venishock, you have two 140 base power stab moves that always crit as well, um, with no drawback. So you can spam the hell out of those with Choice Scarf and Merciless. Super, 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 super strong offensively. You've got really fun um, utility and coverage. You know, you got good enough coverage. Not that you need too much, but you got some solid coverage, some other cool utility, like Aromatic Mist and Noxious Gas, which are great debuffing moves, uh, which work really good with multi-scale and Black Sludge. So this thing is not just an offensive machine, right? You can use it for really good utility with these utility moves, with the toxicing moves, with the debuffing options. Um, and yeah, uh, Shed Tail is there. But the really cool thing is that so Landed is now an option. So as you can read the... <sighs> How do I explain this if you're new here and you don't know what the eggs are? Uh, pause the video, read the description, or you can watch my other videos explaining stuff about the ROM hack. But all your encounters are going to be eggs. So the Salanded egg will be stuck as a female just for convenience because, you know, it's just nice to have the option to evolve. But if you want to RNG your nature, uh, gender, which I think is more cool to like bond with your Pokemon, right? Like you RNG your gender, um, uh, you know, because you're, you're already supposed to RNG your Terra type and RNG, you know, your uh, nature. So. You know, if you want to randomize your gender, just for like flavor reasons for the most part. Uh, but this is one of the few cases where your gender actually matters in this game, because attracts the you know, shenanigans is not a thing. But um, yeah, you can um, RNG your Solandit, and if you get male, then you're, you're stuck with Solandit. But it's it's he's got his own. I mean, he's he's already fast. He's relative. He's pretty strong, and he's bulkier than Salazzle with a Violite. But of course, he can't hold um, Black Sludge with a Violite, and he also doesn't have multi scale, so he's not actually bulkier. Um, he's still relatively bulky with investment, though. Uh, Poison Fire. It's a lot of shit because people love to brainlessly hyperfixate on weaknesses, especially four times weaknesses, and I fucking hate that. It's a big pet peeve of mine because Fire Poison is fucking great defensively. Look at those resists, man. Fire, Steel, Poison, Fighting, Ice, and then four times to Grass, four times to Fairy, four times to Bug. It's, it's fucking amazing. Really, really good resistances, man. Um, tons and tons. I love Poison type for that reason, and Fire, too. Fire is really good defensively, but... Yeah, they make a great defensive combo. Who the fuck cares if you're fucking weak to ground, man? Switch out. Like, not every fucking Pokemon's gonna have a ground move, but yeah. Um, or you can even kill the ground type. It's not that hard. So, yeah, weaknesses are much easier to play around in game. Um, but yeah, defensively this thing's sick. And then so land it with that prankster, as you can read. I mean, hopefully you read it already by now, um, because otherwise, man, I would rather have covered this earlier in the video. But sometimes, you know, the words just come out of my mouth, and I just go with the flow. Um, because Salandit's awesome. So he's got Prankster Encore, Prankster Shed Tail, Prankster Will-O-Wisp, Prankster Parting Shot, Prankster Disable, Prankster Torment, Prankster Toxic, T-Spikes, Taunt. Like, even just Prankster Taunt on the lead, right? Because a lot of the leads are going to have anti-setup stuff. So if you taunt them, you can go crazy from there. You can set up a T-Spike for free. You can set up a Parting Shot out into your ally for free. You can use it as a pivot. You can disable Encore. Encore Disable with Prankster. You can uh, Will-O-Wisp, Guaranteed Burn for priority. Uh, Noxious Gas is uh, dropping Attack, Special Attack, and Speed, and Poisoning. Um, Salazzle is the only one that gets Aromatic Mist and Dreamy Kiss and Draining Kiss and Alluring Voice and Charm because it's got the whole like pheromone, you know, like kind of seduction vibe going on. Um, also, 
Misty Terrain too. But yeah, uh, Aromatic Mist and Dreamy Kiss are really good options for them. Uh, even, Dream even Draining Kiss, you could do some shenanigans there with multi-scale. It'd be really cool if you got like Terra Fairy, that'd be kind of sick. Like Terra Fairy, uh, Draining Kiss or something, but yeah. Um, Dreamy, Ki uh, Dreamy Kiss is good for sleep, uh, guaranteed sleep if with Wide Lens, of course. And also, coincidentally, this one also benefits from Wide Lens with Fire Blast and Sludge Wave and Inferno. So honestly, that's a pretty good item on them. Uh, so you could totally take advantage of that. Uh, Focus Blast too, you know, Focus Blast, Fire Blast, Sludge Wave, yeah, Inferno. So that's pretty cool with the Dreamy Kiss. So you can run a good uh, Wide Lens set on this thing uh, once in a while. Um, you know, some other coverage, Scorching Sands, Weather Ball, Terrain Pulse, Dark Pulse, Shadow Ball, Mud Bomber, cool stuff like that. Um, Shed Tail is obviously great, although, I mean, obviously it's even better on Solandate with the pranks there, because, so as fast as Salazzle might look, because obviously, yes, 122 speed looks really fast on paper, um, you have to keep in mind that... Again, you're not, I mean, you guys who are returning know this already. You're not guaranteed a plus speed nature, so you're not actually that fast. You're only hitting base. Are you even hitting base 100? Okay, you are. I'm, I'm being a little bit harsh. You're hitting base 101 and below. So that's still good, very good, but it's not like insane. Um, if you get a plus speed nature, then you're going even crazier. Then you're outspeeding probably like base 117 ish. So that's all, that's even better. But yeah, um, all good stuff. Um, Physically, Salazzle also has like 95 power poison tail early on to encourage physical sets more. I already covered the flare blitz. Um, they've got fire lash, which like I said, is a guaranteed flinch. And it also drops defense, so you can use that to encourage physical sets even more. Um, because again, 93 attack is like, it's good, very good. Um, definitely with move relenter, you can switch to physical sets once in a while. Uh, you also got like Dragon Dance, which you could do with multi-scale, in theory, could work. Actually, it's pretty good because you have fire lash to cheese the uh, focus sash mon. So you, you, actually, you actually totally could take advantage of a uh, DD multi-scale, honestly. Uh, so yeah. Um, also, agility, multi-scale, weakness policy is good. So yeah, tons of fun ways to abuse this thing, man. And obviously, Flash Fire is still always going to be good. You've still got your Terra. Da, 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 da. You guys get the idea. So yeah, if you made it to the end of the video, shout out to you. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, any other prankster things? Sweet Scent is not listed but uh, as one of the prankster things, but it's also really good. Uh, Noxious Gas is better, but... So for early, early game, Sweet Sense is great. It drops attack and special attack by minus one, so that's good. Um, it's like one of the only other prankster moves that I not list. T-Wave is a decent option. Not really, though. Pretty gimmicky. Um, it's pretty much everything um, for prankster. Most of the important ones, at least. So yeah, uh, shout out to you. Appreciate it if you made it to the end. Really, I do. It does mean a lot. So leave a comment down below if you did. Peace, y'all. I think I covered everything, right? Yeah. All right, y'all. Oh, and I guess I didn't say this yet, but I love Solandit. I think it's cool. He's way cooler than Salazzle. That's why I made him. Also, I just think it's cool for, like, these guys to not be completely useless, right? Because Salazzle and Solandit's cool. Yeah, he could have been a bit slower, maybe a bit weaker, maybe, like, 400 BST, slightly, like, 92 special attack. 107 speed would be more reasonable or just less spadef. But I don't know. This is, like, the high end of the stats I see for him. So, I don't know. I think it's cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and it's my game. I can do whatever I want at the end of the day. And I do like Solandit, so... I, would, I prefer Prankster from Wooden Scale for sure. I think this guy's got a really cool kit for Prankster. Uh, especially with Movie Lander, man. That Movie Lander makes Prankster so much better than in Sweltering. Because in Sweltering, you have to really commit. So it's like, kind of hard to like abuse Prankster and then switch to a Merciless at the next fight. Like It's really difficult to do that reliably because you have so much 4-move slot syndrome. But here, there's no downside to just switching your moves around constantly. All right, y'all. That's, that's enough for today. Peace, y'all.